Yo, what is good? My name is O'Keefe Fish, and in this video, we're gonna go over my top five legal herbs for smoking. All these herbs are completely legal, and you can use them for pretty much any type of smoking. You can pack them in a bowl or bong, you can roll them up in joints or blunts or backwoods, and you can even vaporize them if you really want to. These herbs are also a great alternative to cannabis. So if you need to pass a drug test or you're on probation or maybe you just don't like weed, these herbs will allow you to still enjoy the relaxing act of smoking without the need for cannabis or tobacco. And even if you are able to smoke cannabis, these herbs are still great to mix with the weed and experiment with different smoke blends. I'm gonna go over the effects, the feeling, what they look like, and a lot more. So if you like this content, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. So this list is in no particular order and these herbs are all unique in their own way in how they affect you and what they do. And like I mentioned earlier, you can also mix them and make your own herbal smoke blends. But yeah, I'm just gonna cover five for this video. So let's get right into it. The first one, which is one of my favorites, is called Damiana. It's non-psychoactive, so you won't get high from it, but it still gives a mildly relaxing effect when you smoke it. It will promote satisfactory state and sense of well-being. As in, it kind of just chills you out. Like, if you ever smoked DMT before, when you come out of that trip, you feel just kind of satisfied with the world. Like, life is good, life is chill. You know, you're not really bothered by anything. You're kind of just content with your life. And that's the feeling that Damiana gives you. The herb does look somewhat similar to cannabis. You know, it's got that similar shade of green. It's also very leafy and very stemmy. If you tend to roll it up in a joint or something, you definitely want to take these stems out because they'll poke through the rolling paper and make holes where the smoke can get out. And if you grind it up enough, it rolls up pretty well, whether it's a joint or a blunt or even a backwood. But yeah, the smoke is very subtle, very smooth, and it's not habit forming. So Damiana is not addictive. Personally, Damiana is probably my favorite non-marijuana herb. I don't really smoke it on its own too much, but I do mix it with weed a lot. It's especially good if you're rolling up, and there's a few reasons for that. The first reason is, say for example, you wanna have a little smoke session, relax for 10 to 20 minutes, but you have class, you gotta write an essay, or you gotta go to work where you have to be alert and focused, and it would just be irresponsible for you to get high in that situation. Well, instead, you can smoke Damiana, still have that chill smoke sesh, and then come out of it without being blazed out of your mind. <laughs> this way, when you're done smoking, you can still get your work done more faster and efficiently because you aren't super Super high because in some situations it's just not very smart or efficient to be really stoned for the task. But with all these herbs, you're still able to enjoy the chill act of smoking without having to use any marijuana or tobacco products. The next benefit is that mixing Damiana with your weed will save a lot of weed. For example, say you roll up a blunt that's 50% Damiana and 50% ganja. Well, half of that blunt that would have been weed, you now don't have to use. So you can save it to roll up in another blunt later instead of putting all that weed in just one blunt. So you end up conserving a lot of weed over time. But then you may say, well, you get less high. And yes, that's true, but that leads me to my next point. When rolling up stuff like joints or blunts, there's really no need to consume yeah. all of that weed at once, unless you wanna be non-productive and have a couch log for the next three, four or five hours. Like say you wanna roll up a fat backwood, you're gonna need like an eighth of weed for that. And even if you don't care about conserving, do you really need to face an eighth of weed all at once? I can understand if it's like right before bed or something and you're just trying to knock out. But other than that, if you're gonna solo a wood, it's just gonna make you a lazy, unproductive sloth for the next several hours. So if you like to wake and bake or smoke throughout the day, you may wanna experiment with Damiana or some of these other herbs that I'm about to cover. This way you can smoke more herb more often and still be productive and get efficient work done throughout your day. Anyway, I kind of went on a little tangent there. Let's get into the next legal herb on this list and that is chamomile. Now this one you may have heard before because it's commonly used in tea. So this one you may be able to find some laying around your kitchen in which you can just rip the tea bag open and take the chamomile out to use for smoking. Personally, I don't really use chamomile that much. It doesn't really do anything effects wise. Some people say that smoking it relaxes them, but I just think that's placebo and the relaxing effect is coming from the act of smoking itself because like i said smoking anything is just very relaxing and very chill chamomile is a flower and these are the buds that you can smoke or put in tea and before you smoke it you preferably want to grind them up so it kind of looks like this the smoke is extremely light on the lungs and it does pretty much nothing besides add a floral aroma to whatever you're smoking because i mean it is a flower definitely don't roll it up in a joint or else it will canoe which 
means the joint will burn very unevenly and it just won't work out well. Chamomile is definitely better to smoke out of a bong or bowl. And if you do decide to put it in a joint or blunt, only add a few sprinkles of it. That'll be enough to give the joint more of a fluorescent smell and make the smoke less harsh in your lungs. Any more than a few sprinkles of chamomile will make your joint burn very unevenly. Personally, I would say the main use of chamomile would be to use as a filler for a bong and change up the scent of the smoke a little bit. Anyway, the next herb I want to showcase is canna. Now this herb is slightly psychoactive and a lot of people claim that this is like a legal high. If you take enough of it, it can uplift your mood and produce euphoria. It's stimulating yet slightly sedative as well. It'll give you a nice little buzz and make your thoughts organized more peacefully, if that makes sense. A lot of people like to combine canna with THC because it gives you a unique buzz that only the two together can produce. This right here is the extract form of canna and it kind of looks like DMT powder. You definitely can't roll this up by itself because it's straight powder and that just would not work out well. However, you can mix a tiny bit in with whatever else you're rolling up and that's the perfect way to do it. I almost always throw a little canna in anything I smoke, whether I'm packing a bowl or rolling up. Canna produces the most profound effects out of all the herbs on this list, meaning canna is more intense. It's still nothing major, but you can definitely feel it. If you need a stimulating herb that's not marijuana, you may want to look into canna. Moving on to number four on this list, we got mint leaf. Mint is mildly stimulating for a very short period of time, kind of just wakes you up a bit. It's great for smoking on its own, as well as mixing with other herbs. This is what the mint looks like. Because the leaves are very thin, you don't really want to roll up with only mint, otherwise it will burn extremely unevenly and will keep losing its light. However, mint is fantastic to pack in bowls or smoke in a mix with other herbs. If you pack mint in a bowl, it will cool off the hit and make it less harsh in your lungs. It's kind of like an herbal percolator in a way. It allows you to achieve a smoother hit and have way less coughing. Additionally, mint is one of the best tasting herbs out there. I mean, it literally tastes like mint. So not only will it cool off your hit, but it also makes the hit taste all minty and fresh. You can never really go wrong by throwing some mint in your bowl pack. Anyhow, moving on to the fifth and final herb on this list, we got green tea. Just like chamomile, you may find this laying around your kitchen because of how commonly it's used for drinking tea. So if you got a little baggie of it like this, you can go ahead and tear it open to extract the herb. Now that your herb is removed from the bag, you can proceed to use it for smoking. The cool thing about green tea is that it's naturally caffeinated. So if you smoke enough of this stuff, you will get a minor caffeine buzz, thus making it a stimulating herb. The smoke can be a little rough on the lungs, so you may want to include some mint in there as well. Green tea has an overall calming effect on the body and brings you at ease. Smoking some of this can definitely calm you down if you're stressed out going into it. Generally, green tea is pretty safe to use and is actually considered healthy. But yo, these are just five of many herbs that are out there. I do have a bonus herb that I want to share with you guys, but first, please smash that like button and subscribe for more good vibes in the future. Follow me on the internet is completely free, and I would love to make you part of the journey. Now, as promised, the bonus herb I want to share is catnip. Yes, you can smoke catnip, and it's actually pretty awesome. So if you guys want to learn about those amazing benefits, I'll provide a link in the description below for a video I made fully dedicated to smoking catnip and how it differs from affecting humans and cats. So yeah, if you want to watch me get higher than my kitties on some nip, definitely check that out. That's all for me today. My name is Oki Fish, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.